Hey everybody, so today we got a garage floor. It's supposed to rain out today. It's pretty cloudy right now. So we're gonna do this and get a roof on it. 3226 garage. We gotta rake it out a little bit first, compact it, put some poly down, and we'll be ready to go. That looks good, Luke. Yeah. Hey, whatever you want to do. What do you want to do? What do you think? Okay. Moisten it a little bit, so. kind of making yeah. a little bit of a mess, ain't it? Yeah, it'll compact it down more, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'll grab it. I just want to finish that door real quick. Yeah. Hey guys, so we're usually not responsible for doing the compacting and the cleaning and the grading, but the excavator, this is just how we left it. So we ha we had to come in, and in order for us to get the floor done today, you know, we had a little bit of prep to do. It was it was left over from the previous fall, so they went and they built the house, they built the garage throughout the winter, and then the, the garage floor never got done because it got too cold in the fall. So we're back. This is actually a day it's supposed to rain, so it's a good job for today. We had to cancel our outside job. So when we showed up this morning, we had just a little bit of prep to do. We wanted to rake out, get as many of the leaves out as possible. One of the back corners, the dirt was a little bit high, so we raked that down. And now we're getting the compactor out and we're just compacting it because that sand he put in was really soft. So we're going to wet it, compact it. Uh, Darren's putting on the forms for the garage doors and the, that there's two pass doors, what we call man doors. So we're screwing on the forms for that and just getting all the prep done before the concrete shows up. The concrete's actually on the road headed here. It's about a half an hour drive for the concrete truck to get here this morning. So we showed up uh, a good hour early to get all this prep done. Um, and we're gonna put six mil poly down too. Typically we usually lay poly in the house and garages that we do. Uh, the six mil poly just helps keep any moisture vapor from coming up through the concrete floor. So we'll just get this spread out. This is, we're working for the foundation contractor here on this job. This is his job. So he subs it out to us. You know, and he, he adds in all the specs for the job, and the spec was just six mil poly with fiber mesh in the concrete, so no wire, no rebar. It, it isn't really needed inside a garage like this anyway. Gotta have my coffee. Cold brew coffee, what do you guys like? What's your, let me know what you guys like for coffee. Down in the comments. Usually I got one or two a day going. Kind of a habit, you know. We all got our habits, right? Good ones, bad ones. So he's got a 3,500-pound mix. We got fiber mesh in it. We got air and drainment in it. And a couple bags of cow. Two seven-yard loads we got showing up. Again, we use the high range water reducer and everything so we can loosen it up a little bit. This floor is gonna slope two inches from the back towards the front. So we're ready to go. I'll back you up first. So on a lot of garage floors we do, the, the contractors we work for, they just spec fiber mesh. And that's a lot of reason for that is 
if the sub base is installed properly and it's compacted really really hard the ground's not going to settle so the concrete's not going to settle and crack and if it's the right sub base if it's the right gravel then it's not going to heave and crack so it's inside these concrete walls here the floor so it, it can't go anywhere so there's really i mean the wire and the rebar are only in the concrete to help hold it together if it cracks right so it doesn't actually make the concrete stronger on a floor like this like 3500 psi concrete isn't going to be 4000 psi concrete if you put wire mesh in this it's still 3500 psi concrete so the wire and the rebar grid will just help hold concrete together when it cracks it helps hold the cracks tight it helps hold the cracks from lifting or settling so if you do everything else right especially the sub base and you use the fiber mesh then you don't really need the wire or the rebar in here that's why you don't see a lot of wire or rebar on some of these garages and houses that we do uh, i know i see that down in the comments but that's the reason why um, and we don't typically ever have any trouble with it as long as the sub base is compacted properly and put in with good gravel so that's why all you see here is just the six mil poly with the 3500 psi concrete and the fiber mesh and that's how a lot of our pours go up here in Maine. Um, so we're getting this poured out. Again, we're using the high-range water reducer in this. We typically use at least a mid-range water reducer. And what that does is it helps keep the water-cement ratio low, which helps keep the strength high, but allows you to pour a pretty loose slump, you know, a pretty, I don't, I don't want to say watery slump, but really loose up to a six or seven with a mid-range and seven or eight slump with the high range so with only three of us on the crew basically and we pour in concrete every single day you know we're not going to pour really dry concrete mixes like a four we'll just get worn out we'll get burnt out before we even get through halfway through the summer if we do that so we'll use the we'll use the chemicals that they provide to help increase the slump which makes our job pouring and, and screening and bull floating a lot easier. And it doesn't really affect the set times at all for us. I mean, it seems the concrete seems to set up just the same as if we didn't use them at all. So we'll, you know, they, these companies charge two to three bucks a yard extra. So on a floor like this, you know, a 14 yard floor, you're talking an extra 30 or 40 bucks maybe to add the water reducer to it. So that's, for us, that's just uh, a no-brainer. We're going to do that all day long, all year long. You can see the flowability of that stuff coming out of the chute. just makes it nice. It makes it so one guy like Luke, he can pretty much spread it out, mostly on his own, while Darren can go do something else instead of taking two guys to spread it out. And then I can, you know, I'll typically run the chute if I have to. And if I can just lock it in place and help Luke, I do. So there's the first truck dumped out. There's seven yards right there. It takes literally just a couple minutes to get that dumped out. And we'll, if we have a two truck load like this, we'll typically dump out the first truck. Just get him dumped right out. Get him out of the way so we can get the second truck backed in. Get him mixing while we're screeding and bull floating the first truck. This ended up being, you know, the floor averaged about five inches thick on this one. It was, uh, the, the subgrade, the level of the subgrade was, was okay. I say it wasn't great, but it was okay. So we made sure we ordered plenty of concrete, not, we didn't want to run out. We use a laser too, I and mean, you can't see, the, oh, there's a laser right there. But beforehand, before the truck showed up, we used the laser and we shot our lines around the inside of the foundation. And then we snapped a chalk line at the level of the concrete. And that's what Darren and Luke were, are magging their outside edges to is that chalk line. And it's got a slope to it. So it slopes from the back towards the front. And then I'm getting our center pad, our, what we call a wet pad, put in there right to grade. Concrete's kind of low there now, so we got to pull some in. So I can get that wet pad set to where we need it. And then we, we'll use that wet pad to screed off from in the middle. 
you'll see here in a second how we strike our, our grade pad in the middle and then we'll use the pads on the outside that the guys just magged to screed off from, from the outside. We've never used pipes or two by four screeds, pads or anything like that to screed from. We've always used wet pads like this and that just that's the way we were taught. That's what's the easiest for us. That's what we feel is the fastest for us. So, and it's always been really, really accurate. So when I'm screeding off that wet pad in the center, I'm just barely touching it with the bottom of that screed. And that means that I've got it right to grade, right where I need it. And then Darren and I'll just turn and we'll come come down those those two pads right there. I got the center pad, Darren's on the right with the, the pad they magged to the wall. Luke's doing all the work raking, as you can see, <laughs> he's hot now. So, for the guys, for the guys screeding like Darren and I, I mean, it's, it's typically not that much work with the, with a, with the concrete as loose as it is, it's the guy doing the raking that's really working. <laughs> We call that a bay, so there's one bay right there, then we'll we get that done. We'll go over to the next bay, get that screeded down as far as we can. Concrete was, you know, up on this left side where we are now, it was actually pretty thick, so it didn't that first truck really didn't even quite go halfway as far as the screeding goes. But it got the grade got closer to four inches the more towards we got to it to the front doors. So we're gonna stop right there, and then where that back, the second truck's out there, he's mixing. We're gonna get him backed in. Luke's right now, he's just getting bull float, and I'm just showing you just how easy that is to bull float, just down and back, down and back. And then with a slump like this, that makes bull floating really easy. And that gives you a really, really smooth surface to power trial. We're gonna end up power trialing this thing really smooth. That's just what most people want for a garage floor up here. And then we also saw our contraction joints in the same day. So we'll get one sawed down the middle each way on this. So we'll break it into like four squares after we get it done sawed. The boys like putting fans up too. You can see there's a little fan up there in the back. And then there's a, another blower there to the right. That just helps circulate the air. Usually when you pour on top of poly like this... The, there is some mixing water in the concrete that will just float to the surface and that, that we call that bleed water and that just kind of sits on the surface and you know you really you don't want to you don't want to finish that bleed water into the surface when you get ready to power trial you want that bleed water to evaporate and the fans just help circulate the air inside the garage and just help that bleed water evaporate a little bit quicker. So we back the second truck into one door over there and then we'll get that bay all poured out. Then we'll pull him out of that door and back him into this other door up here towards the front. Darren jumps right back. He'll stop magging edges as soon as we have some edges to mag. Like I said, it was pretty thick over there. It was about six inches thick over there. But the mix is pretty nice, you know, the 3500 mix with the water reducer. It's a pretty nice mix. It uh, has a lot of pace to it, I think, and it also finishes really nice. It's got some cream to it when you finish. The worst thing is to try to finish a mix that's really rocky or even really sandy. doesn't have any, what we call, cream to it. The cream is actually the cement paste. And I guess, you know, depending on what mix design you use for your floors, that'll determine just how much cement is in each yard. These ones, the 3,500 pound mix has about 520 pounds of cement in each yard of concrete. So that, that's a pretty rich mix. We have all, you know, if you've watched any of my videos, 
this company that we're using today, they have all just rear dumps. They don't have any front dumps down in this area where we're at. About, they do have, I think they have four concrete plants around the state. And in some of the other ones they have, which are about an hour and a half, two hours away, they do have some front dumps in those concrete plants. But the one here where we live, the town where we live, where we get this out of, they don't have any. So we just use these rear dump trucks. We're so used to them that it doesn't even matter to us. It's just as easy for us. And the one thing about it is, is on a rear dump, you know, you have to hold the chute if you're going to dump him right out of the chute and move him at the same time. So I'm so used to it that it makes it pretty easy for us. With a high range water reducer, that's probably. That's probably between a seven and an eight slump right there. So perfectly fine slump if you use a high range water reducer. If you're not using if you're not using the super plasticizer or the high range like we are, then you probably don't want to pour it quite that loose. The three of us, you know, the three of us. We'll pour anywhere up to usually a four, maybe even a 5,000 square foot floor with just the three of us. As long as we can tailgate it or dangle pump it, one or the other. But typically we're doing mostly residential floors, houses, garages, or we're doing patios or pool decks or walkways. Not many people in Maine actually do concrete driveways anymore. We used to do a lot of those, but... Just for whatever reason, the liquid salt they use up here on the roads just eats the concrete, even if you seal it really good. So we won't we won't do too many driveways up here unless you know the people just snow blow their driveways. They don't have somebody come in and plow and sand and salt it. This is what we call kick screeding right here. We kick our footprints in as we move backwards while we're screeding. And with a, you know, with a nice loose mix like this, it's really? actually pretty easy. The oldest ones you see doing this. <laughs> when I first started, you know, I was I was 15 years old when I first started this. We were doing mostly all commercial work, and we didn't <laughs> we didn't use the water reducers like this. It was just regular concrete, and it was it was three to four slumps, that, which is basically. That's that's some really stiff concrete to be screeding, and that's what I learned screeding off from, is those really really stiff, hard to move concrete slumps. So when you jump on a slump like this and you kick screed, it just makes it it's a world of difference. It makes it so much easier to screed and to learn how to screed on a slump like this. It doesn't take us very long to pour a floor like this. And, you know, most of the time during the year, our really busy, busy season is from April to usually, usually it goes all the way through November unless we start getting some snow at the end of November. But it'll go through November and sometimes into the very beginning of December. So it'll be busy, busy. And by that, I mean, you know, we're pouring concrete every day, sometimes two of these floors like this a day. And then, so we'll hustle, you know, for those eight months or so, we'll really hustle. We're basically, what I say, we're trying to squeeze 12 months of work into eight. Because those other months, you know, mid-December through mid-March is our winter. And it gets pretty cold up here. We don't typically pour hardly anything outside in the winter. We can pour inside. Like, we could do a garage like this in the winter. We just... We'd poly over the doors and stick a heater in there and we'd be able to do that as long as the ground wasn't frozen. You know, as long as they, they kept it heated before we got there. But what happens a lot of times late in the fall when they put these foundations in is they don't, they don't cover the ground. They don't cover the sub base. So overnight, you know, temperatures get down to 15, 20 degrees overnight and the ground will start freezing. So if we show up on a job like this, and there's two or three inches of frost in the ground. Well, we can't pour concrete over that. We don't pour concrete over any frost. I don't care, even if it's a half inch of frost in the dirt. So we can pour in the winter, and we do. 
just not anywhere near as much and only if it's heated and you know ready to go for us Bow floating is easy with that stuff. Look at that, down and back, down and back. And then, so we'll leave one guy here to power trial with that blue truck you see in the background. That's got both the power trials in it. And he'll power trial it, probably take him three, four, maybe five hours to get this all power trialed to where we need it. He'll get it sawed, and then that'll be it. He'll strip the forms off because the, the floor will be rock hard. Then we'll be done this one. Two of us will go get some other stuff ready for another day or... If it's a good day out, a lot of times we'll go pour something else. But that's going to be it typically for jobs like this. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you come on back. We'll see you on the next one.